Hi, I thought I would post an update on my Boxford Model C lathe. I've been doing some work on this lathe over the last few months on and off, and uh, it's nearing uh, being finished now. Now, um, as you can see, it's not entirely complete. You'll see that there's no tailstock. I do have the tailstock. Uh, I just need a couple more adjustment screws and then that will go on there. And on the headstock end, yes, I do have the um, the, the cover and the tumble reverse and the change wheels and yeah, so I've got all that stuff just haven't got it on just for the moment um, So I've done um, a number of jobs on this obviously I've or fairly obviously you can probably guess I've um, Repainted it so it can make it look nice not that it actually makes any difference Although having said that it does when you strip any old machine down uh, it tends to help you find problems and um, yeah so I don't actually think it's too bad an idea actually repainting even if strictly speaking it's not needed um, so um, along with fixing things like in the headstock the the high low um, adjustment was uh, high low selector uh, that was that was not working basically it seemed like someone had crash things inside so uh, I might be able to post a couple of photos or maybe even another video about that sometime but that that's all been repaired I repaired that myself that's come out really well actually so that's that's entirely mint inside now um, I fitted a new three-phase motor on there uh, these uh, newer motors um, yeah so typically most new motors they have a fairly large wiring box compared to older motors so that fouled with the um, with the belt. Uh, so I had to put it on on the on the side. You know, by default they're normally mounted on the top. This is a foot mount motor, uh, but then that meant then that I couldn't get enough adjustment. We've got rails here, sliding rails. For let me just quickly show you. you notice the belt at the moment. The green belt is taut, but if I just loosen that off, you'll see now that I can slacken it off. It's quite nice. It's an easy way to adjust the uh, pulleys. Um, but in some positions, that green belt was going to foul with the um, um, the wiring box. So put it there. But then that meant that the rails were too short because then that box was fouling with the lathe. So uh, made new um, new rails. Um, while I was at it, um, made new part of this as well, just to make it look nicer. Um, and uh, the uh, the rear of the rails are supported now by this bracket, um, like so. I've I also beefed up the back of the cabinet. I welded on, I think it was about six mil thick plate onto the back. So uh, you can't really see it very well, can you? Because it's been painted. Let me just have a look from inside. Uh, you'll see that I don't believe in, in painting the inside of the cabinets. Can't see the point myself. But hopefully you'll see like a burn mark uh, in the paint. That's basically... At the extent of where I have welded on the new, uh, the new plate on the back, just 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 beef things up. I'm not sure uh, whether it's entirely necessary, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that the that that whole um, camshaft arrangement was um, nice and stiff, not subject to bounce. Seems to work well. Um, I will probably make up a guard or something to go there at some point. Uh, I also want a guard coming across here, so I haven't done that yet. I'm not really using this in anger at all at the moment. I do have another lathe. Uh, this more is more like just a lathe to play around with. In fact, I've quite enjoyed just like um, fixing it up and fixing a few problems. Uh, it wasn't really usable, actually. Well, it was, sort of was usable um, when I got it. Um, there were various issues like, like the, the back plate for the, for the chuck, which came with this. And in fact, also... Uh, the chucks and back plates I had none of them fitted the register correctly the register was slightly oversized which is weird but I, I turned that down that now uh, is good so the chucks um, run true or as true as you're going to get a three jaw chuck to run anyway um, and of course also I changed the what was a single phase motor for a three phase motor and uh, very happy with that and so uh, I retained this uh, this old I don't know what you call it, panel cover or something. Um, I had to mill down these flat and around the back as well to remove some material so I could get these uh, these new switches in there. Um, the emergency stop and the stop, they're just 
I say emergency stop, it's not really, it's just a latching stop switch, whereas that is just momentary. Um, so they're wired, wired in series. I could probably, if I wanted to, wire up an emergency stop to stop very quickly, but then if you aggressively stop one of these lathes with a screw on chuck, the chuck might come flying off, so you don't want to do that. Um, I've got a WEG CFW300 uh, single phase to three phase inverter there. As you can see, there's not a lot in that cabinet at all. It's mounted on some DIN rail. Uh, totally happy with that. I think it's it's a, a really nice inverter. I've got uh, three of these inverters now uh, on various things. And uh, yeah, I, I think they're really good. They're not expensive. They're only very marginally more expensive than cheap Chinese imports that you can get on eBay, which I don't rate at all. Uh, in fact, I have uh, I've had them in the past and then um, sold them on because um, various reasons I, I felt that they didn't meet um, uh, modern safety standards that you would um, expect uh, in the UK. Uh, this though is on the other hand very good. Uh, manual is very comprehensive it's easy to understand uh, wiring of it is very easy to do as well uh, that's the control wiring so the white cables there they are the digital logic gray is my analog it doesn't have to be that way that's just the way i've done it um you'll notice that this this motor here the gray um sorry the cable this cable goes to the motor uh, that's sy cable so it's a braided that shielded cable and I use that terminal block that Wago terminal block to tie in the the shield with the protective earth cable as well uh, on the controls so we've got the two stops which are just uh, in series together and then we've got the start uh, the rotary potentiometer and then we've got uh, forward which is down and then uh, reverse which is up like so Let's give it a go then, so you can see it running. Okay, start. I think it's probably something like a two second start uh, ramp up time I've set. I mean, it, it could do something else. That's currently running at about 30 hertz, I think. Yeah, 30 hertz. That's when my, that must be the, the lowest speed I've got to set that. Speeding it up, let's have a look. Uh, 60 hertz, just over 60 hertz. Uh, I think I've set the VFD to run up to about 75 hertz or something like that maximum. It's a three quarter horsepower motor. Uh, if I um, hit reverse, the chuck isn't going to spin off. I'm just going to ramp down slowly and then reverse. And then forward. Like so. Slow it down if I want. And we can stop like that, twist, and then it pops back out. Start and stop, like so. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, other, another thing which I just thought to mention at the moment, I don't have any, and I probably will never actually use pumped coolant in this, but so that's just all empty at the moment in the middle. Uh, right hand side uh, is also empty. I will make myself some handles at some point. But um, down at the bottom here, let's just stand back a moment. You'll see that I've got these feet, which is just square tubing. Came from the scrapyard actually, uh, very cheap. And um, then also I've made these feet, they're probably nylon. Uh, they're actually from some large casters that I had which I wasn't doing anything with, so I just chucked them up and lathe them, another lathe, not this one, and turn them down flat. So I think they make quite nice feet and they don't have adjustment. I mean, I could add adjustment because I've got these uh, M12 screws. I could add adjustment, but I, I don't believe in, in bothering with that. Um, if I find that a lathe um, rocks on the floor, I'm just, I'm just going to um, lift it up with a pallet truck and just uh, put a bit of packing under there just to level it out. Um, now, uh, probably someone's going to criticise, which is fine if you want to add a comment, but um, normally there's a foot there and in the back corner, 
not straight like that. So I just drilled it out because that's the way I wanted it. I don't quite understand why you'd have the feet narrower on the front than on the back, but uh, that's the way it is, I believe, by default. But anyway, didn't want it like that myself. And so, um, and also, actually, you can't see it now, but underneath, I've welded on some additional pads there just to make that a little bit stronger and even. And you'll notice that all around the cabinet, there's loads of additional holes all over the place. OK, and so I will probably make some infill panels. Um, this was actually an underdrive cabinet, so the cabinet is not authentic to the to the lathe. But um, yeah, looks all right for me. Um, and I'm not going to have the cable coming out the side. That's just temporary. I'll probably 3D print some, some um, like cable mount or something like that to come around there. Uh, but um, yeah, if you've got any questions, I don't quite know what really what to say in these videos. But if you've got any questions, and just feel free to ask. I just think they might be useful to someone to have a look at. Uh, you know, have another look at someone else's lathe to see what they've been doing. Uh, I did make it turned a new shaft there because the old one was, I can't remember what was wrong. I think it was like heavily mashed up from the spinning pulley or something like that. I think, I think that was what it was. Can't quite remember. Oh, I think this pulley wobbled too much as well. Something like that. Um, what else have I done? Um, I made, um, for th these screws hold the half nuts. And I think I've posted in the previous video about how I made these new screws uh, and they are eccentric. So if you twist them, then you can get a different adjustment on the half nuts because the half nuts on this lathe are quite badly and unevenly worn. So it was slipping um, under powered feed. And uh, actually, that just brings me on to just mention that I am considering. I mean, I've got too many other jobs to do at the moment. Uh, but I'm considering actually changing this whole lathe to an electronic lead screw lathe. So uh, I quite fancy just, just playing around with that, really. And I've got another lathe that I can use normally. And I thought that maybe I would, you know, there's not really much reason, to be honest, to have this second lathe. But apart from just like playing around. Um, but I thought that if I could convert this so it had an electronic lead screw, and then so I could do uh, with ease, hopefully with ease, screw cutting on it. Then I thought it might justify having the second lathe. That's either going to mean that I'm going to have some sort of ball screw arrangement or I'm going to, um, well, I don't know what, actually, to be honest. So, um, yeah, when I get around to thinking about that, then I might post some more about it. Um, like all old, I mean, it looks in nice condition, doesn't it? I think it's like 1949 or something like that. But like all old lathes, says there's, there's you know there's backlash. Let's just see. Yeah, there's backlash. Um, it's not terrible. I mean, you can w always work around that. I never use the dials on these old lathes. I always uh, use some other means. Uh, I tend to use dial indicators and just work off the dial indicator if I'm doing anything precise. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks nice, doesn't it? Well, I think it does anyway. And uh, it obviously doesn't meet uh, modern safety standards in the sense that there's no um, chuck guard or guarding here. Um, I will probably sort that out with just a guard, simple guard on the left hand side there. Probably make myself some sort of chuck guard arrangement there. Um, but um, yeah, you're never going to totally make a lathe safe anyway, are you, with a you know big lump of metal spinning around? Um, oh, this. By the way, just in case you're wondering, uh, that um, tool holder is not original to this lathe. It comes off my Viceroy lathe. So this is what I got with this lathe. And um, yeah, um, might use that at some point. It was just, I was just wanted to quickly do a little bit of turning on this lathe. So uh, that one was convenient to me. Um, okay, so hopefully there's something of interest. I don't know whether <laughs> it's just a boring old video, but uh, maybe... Uh, people are thinking about doing modifications or something on their Boxford lathe and or maybe you're just looking to see like you know what you can get if you 
pay not a lot of money for an old lathe. Uh, I know that a lot of people seem particularly, you know, Myfords and Boxfords, they, they pay absolutely ridiculous prices. Uh, sometimes, you know, many hundreds or even thousands, uh, whereas I paid um, 70 for the cabinet, uh, 140, I think it was, for the lathe. Uh, and then I sold part of that for for, uh, for 40. So it's just like over 100 for the top and 70 for the bottom. So um, plus, of course, plus I bought a, a new motor and I bought the VFD and I've uh, paid out for paint and and um, a lot of my time um, doing repairs. Anyway, um, yeah, please do add a comment. Just tell me that you watched the video and um, make a suggestion. By all means, uh, tell me what I've done wrong or uh, what I should do next. Thanks very much for watching then. Goodbye.